Hi everybody, my name is Matteo Chiappa, I hope you're well. For those of you who are not familiar with this series, for the past couple of episodes we did a whole bunch of different variations on our main melody we had, and we came up with 20 different orchestrations, and I have now prepared 10 more for you, which I'm going to be showing you throughout the rest of the video, so let's jump in with number 21. I've decided to start with this one because it's really nice and simple, but at the same time it's very effective and it shows how easily you can create this menacing kind of sound with very few elements. At the very beginning we start with a big swell on low strings, low brass and low woodwinds and percussions, of course. After this we have a sustained C minor chord in this register being played by strings, tremolo. Violins up here and violas on the low G. And on top of that, we have triangle playing trills. Triangle is very subtle, but it does help to create this kind of vibe I'm going for. And our melody is taken by uh, French horns in this register. which is very powerful for them and they're playing with a lot of force with very high dynamics. And just like we started, we end with a big swell on low strings, low brass, low woodwinds and percussion, playing this um, open chord B minor over F sharp. That's it, let's play one more time. Number 22. So this one has a dark yet quirky kind of vibe and this particular mood was created through orchestration more than anything else really. And we have a few different elements suggesting that and probably the most obvious one is the bass line that has this bumpy playful kind of quality. And this bass line is being played by piano playing very short notes, uh, celli playing pizzicato and contrabassoon. We also have some accents on the first note of the phrase and the last note of the phrase being played by basses, pizzicato, and percussion being made of snares, bass drum, anvil, and timpani. And on the second half, basses and bass clarinet are doubling the phrase, while we have accents on percussion and uh, low brass as well. As part of the accompaniment, we also have some sort of answer phrase going on on the violins and violas pizzicato that fills in the gaps between the bass lines. And the violins are just playing a minor third interval, while violas are playing a major third on the bottom. And over here, the intervals are being flipped. We have on the top major thirds on violins and minor thirds on violas. But let me put this line in context with the rest of the strings. It sounds a little bit sloppy without the rest of the accompaniment but you get the idea and our melody is being taken by flutes, oboes and celeste an octave higher. Mm -hmm. 
And I forgot to say the melody is being harmonized in my minor triads. Yeah, I feel like you probably recognize this one, right? It's quite an obvious lift. I wish it was my own idea, but yeah, let's break it down. So we have this main ostinato being played by strings and woodwinds. I know it's quite scary looking, but we'll break it down in a second. So the whole idea behind this is to have these little descending runs moving between two different chords, uh, split between different instruments. So we start with a D7, and we then move to a C major. So the very top line is played on piccolos, and then we have the very same line, an octave below, by being played by flute one and first violin. Then we have a minor third below the second flute and second violin. And then violin divisi uh, playing the top line and octave below. And oboes are just filling in with the middle notes. We also have violas on the very bottom playing something like this. But they drop out after a couple of bars making space for the melody, which we now have on trumpets and tenor trombones. Percussion for this particular example is very important, not only for texture but also for rhythm, because it helps uh, reinforcing the rhythm that we have on those little runs, which wouldn't really come across so clearly otherwise. So we have this uh, Lydian chord happening on piano and harp. And we also have triangle and sleigh bells just for some extra sparkle, like a little cherry on top. So let's have a listen to percussion. If we compare the phrase that we played before with and without percussion, you can see how much excitement and clarity it brings. As we said before, our melody has been taken by trumpets and tenor trombones. And as soon as we hit that F note in the melody, our harmony changes to a C sharp major chord, to then a G, and then resolving back to a C. Right, 24. Okay, I know this is pretty long if compared to the other ones, but I needed a little bit of space to demonstrate how to pass this melody around different uh, sections and different instruments. So yeah, before we dive into the details of this, I want to play a piano reduced version so that you can see what I will be talking about.
the melody is being passed from flute to oboe to then violin one, clarinet, and then French horn. And in order to glue all these things together, we have we also have celeste and harp. Rather than playing a bar long phrase like the other instruments do, they play a two bars long phrase. So it creates some slightly smoother transitions. And the harmonic support is being carried by strings. And for the second half, we use exactly the same concept with the same instruments in the very same register. But since we now have a repeated phrase, which is this E flat major 9 arpeggio, we can now use a different technique, uh, which is called dovetailing. And I'm going to get into that in a second. But let me first play the piano reduced version again. And what's also interesting about this is how the melody moves down while the harmony moves up, creating a little bit of contrast. But getting back to dovetailing, the concept behind it is quite simple. All you have to do is uh, overlap the end of the first phrase with the beginning of the second one in order to create some really smooth transitions like I do here from flutes to oboe to oboe to clarinet and then clarinet to French horn. And if you use instruments of similar timbre like strings for example you can uh, have some almost unnoticeable transitions, which I didn't necessarily do here, but I just thought I'd mention it. So let's move to the accompaniment. For that, we have uh, low strings again, together with low woodwinds and French horns at times. Alright, that's it, let's play everything together. So this was quite clearly stolen from Bernard Herrmann, but there are some differences between my version and the original. I just basically took the elements I liked the most and repackaged them a little bit. And in terms of harmony, we start with this arpeggio, which is an F minor major seven add 13. And this is split between woodwinds, uh, strings, and percussion. On the woodwinds, we have uh, flutes and oboes on the top line. 
and the first clarinet on the second line, and violins playing tremolo very, very softly. And on top of this, we have harp and vibraphone and the triangle as well to punctuate the beginning of the phrase. For the melody, we have a slightly unusual combination of instruments. We have English horn, clarinet, the second clarinet, and bassoon. And on the big swell happening right after this, we have a change of harmony moving from a B flat minor 6 to an F major 7. And this is being played by brass made of French horns, trumpets and trombones playing with mutes and tuba together with woodwinds, which now stop playing the arpeggio, joining in with a big build. And the arpeggio that we had before is now being passed to cellos and violins, which we did have before, but they were playing it very, very softly. And about the rest of the strings, we have basses on the tonic and violas tremolo reinforcing the harmony. And just like we started, we end with the arpeggio again, but now with a Lydian dominant kind of vibe. Number 26. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I think it's quite straightforward, but... I wanted to uh, mention it because this kind of string sound with big open chords is something that you hear a lot. And I thought it would be in interesting to talk about it. So the harmony behind it sounds like this. In terms of orchestration, we have basses and cellos, divisi, at the very bottom. And at the same time, we have a nice counterline on violas. And the second violins are just filling out the harmony a little bit and on the second half are playing the melody in octaves together with the first violins. And we also have harp um, adding a little bit of warmth, but it wouldn't really matter if we took it out. Actually, let's do it.
So this is also quite simple, but probably equally as common as the previous one. And for this one, I obviously wanted to do like a brass choral with very strong Americana Copland-esque influences. In terms of orchestration, we start with the focus on the horns, moving then to trumpets. Horns and tuba are accompanying the melody at the very beginning, later followed by French horns accompanying trumpets. On this little crescendo we have over here, when the trumpets take the lead, we also have uh, percussion helping a little bit. So we have timpani, bass drum, uh, piatti, and on these three melody notes, we also have uh, glockenspiel and tubular bells to make the brass sound a little bit more bell-like. I quite like those descending lines in the accompaniment we have on two bar trombones and horn four. So let's listen to the whole thing and then number 28. Okay, so this is an attempt to create an exciting and flowing kind of vibe, but now with the minor progression, we're sitting on this low A-flat pedal tone throughout pretty much the entire segment. And in terms of chords, we are alternating between this A-flat minor and E major, sort of. Talking about the orchestration, we have this very prominent woodwind line and that's being covered by flutes in two octaves and oboes on the top line, but also piccolos on beat two and four. If you watched the past couple of episodes as well as this one, you'd probably know by now that I can't help but overusing percussion, so... We have Harp uh, on the bottom playing a version of this arpeggio. And we also have piano doubling the flutes and of course our trusty glockenspiel which we can't miss. And that goes together with the woodwinds of course. Our melody is now taken by strings and trumpets in two octaves and later three octaves. And we have double basses, tuba and bass trombones on the pedal tone.
while trombones and low woodwinds play uh, some open chords. And finally, French horns playing some very short notes just to keep it moving. Just before we move on number 29, those little runs that you can see over here are being played by woodwinds and they function as an orchestrational crescendo on those long sustained notes. Yeah, I guess you could see this scale uh, I'm using over here in a few different ways. I think the simplest one would be as a diminished scale. But rather than using the top A flat note over here, I'm using A natural, so it sounds like this. As you probably realized by now, for this session I was trying to experiment with darker moods, and this is no exception, I guess. And for this one specifically, I was trying to give it a little bit of a funny edge. And of course, there are quite a few different ways to do it. But specific to this example, this mood is probably being evoked by a combination of different elements. We already said we have this unusual harmony. And that goes together with an unusual combination of instruments. And the harmonic rhythm sounds kind of funny with those short notes on the basses. So let's start with that. On the bass line, we have double basses, piano, and contrabassoon. And since we don't really have a chord progression, I decided to fill in the harmony a little bit with uh, some more pizzicatos on the rest of the strings, which sometimes form diminished and half diminished chords. I mean, it's really subtle, but I didn't really want the harmony to get too thick at this point. But moving on, at the very beginning we got a trill on violins. The melody is now being taken by bassoon, bass clarinet and French horns, very low in the register. And we also have a couple of counter lines on Celeste. Let's play it again and then we'll do the last one. Yeah, I feel like this sounds more complex than it really is. It's in fact many ways similar to the previous one. Uh, I've mentioned the diminished scale before and that's what I'm using here. But rather than having diminished or half diminished chords, I'm only using major chords, a triton apart, 
So we have basses, bass, trombones and timpani on the tonic of the chords. We have cellos playing this ostinato that outlines the chord progression. Uh, while we have tenor trombones playing off the bit. And that is being doubled by piano, of course. And similarly to cellos, we have another ostinato on violins playing measured tremolos, outlining uh, different chord tones. The melody is now being taken by French horns and viola, plus uh, tuba, bass, clarinet and bassoons, an octave below. We also have this little flourish that works as an answer phrase uh, to the melody on the rest of the woodwinds and percussion. And on percussions, we have triangle and glockenspiel, but also some stabs on uh, xylophone and muted trumpets. And finally, we end with an ascending scale harmonized between woodwinds and strings. I have no idea how long this video is gonna be. I've been shooting forever. But if you made it till the end, thank you very much for watching. And please consider becoming a patron if you want to have access to extra educational resources such as the project files for this session and the scores that you have seen throughout the video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions or anything really. If you haven't watched the past couple of episodes, I strongly recommend that you do so. <laughs> And thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.